What up is Marcus with Dynasty Bowl Dads, and we are doing another video of what I would do in a Dynasty rookie mock draft. This is Superflex again versus Mason. And so Mason, of, the, of course, does the Dynasty Fantasy Flock channel, which has thousands of subscribers. I have over a little over a thousand here. And we do have some differing opinions. I feel like he's a very analytic-based uh, person. I don't know if he watches a ton of film. It just doesn't seem like it. Seems like he's very analytical, number based, which is totally okay. Uh, but that is not my realm of going. I like to watch a lot of film, and then I try to almost have the analytics back what the film is saying and seeing actually if that makes sense. Of draft capital and landing spots are gonna be important, of course, in these this upcoming draft. There are situations. That I absolutely hate for wide receivers. There are situations that we absolutely love. Green Bay, Kansas City. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and this rest of this week, mock drafts. Early next week, we're going to be finalizing our rookie rankings going into the draft. So then when the draft happens, we're going to be trying to react to that as soon as possible so we can get you an updated mock draft. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I really enjoy uh, having you guys listen to this channel. 101, which this is all Mason's, what he, uh, he did the mock draft. He also did the rankings here. And I'm going to tell you where I would have these players in the exact same situation. So number one, Brees Hall. Brees Hall, he had to go to Buffalo, two point, or uh, round two, 57th overall pick. This is a common place for Brees Hall. I'm not going to bore you to death with Brees Hall. He should be the 101. Going to Buffalo is a very popular situation that I feel like a lot of mock drafts are going to almost like the Travis Etienne to Miami thing. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. Um, but if Brees Hall, why I don't think he's going to last the 2.57. I think he's going to be drafted in the early second round, excuse me, early second round. That's where these running backs tend to go. Buffalo's going to have to move up if, if they want Brees Hall, but he's the, he's the one one in super flex one one in one QB number one two. And I've seen this a lot. And I tell people that Malik Willis in a lot of leagues, will be the one-on-one because of that upside. There's a lot to love with Malik Willis, and it's his legs, it's his arm, it's his attributes, it's his tools, and there's a lot to hate about Malik Willis. Very inaccurate, very inconsistent, potentially not even ready at the next NFL level. He could have a Trey Lance type of year where he could really be utilized I would almost like like him to be drafted by like a Saints team where you're going to see Winston play the first year and then you see Malik Willis play the second year. I don't think that's going to happen though. I think he's going to go to a team like Atlanta here, 108, or like a Steelers team. Maybe they they have Trubisky be the bridge quarterback for a year. Maybe not. Seattle would be a potential other possibility. But how quickly are you going to have the Drew Lock people or the, the pe- people out there in Seattle pitchforks for Drew Lock? It's going to be fairly quickly. Uh, so Malik Willis is the number two pick here. Is my number four pick. And so the 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 big question, and we're just going to kind of go through this briefly, is Malik Willis. Versus Garrett Wilson. Malik Willis versus Kenneth Walker. Malik Willis versus Traylon Burks. Malik Willis versus Drake London. These are the situations and problems. I think if you're going to have decent landing spots. And so, Garrett Wilson, spoiler, goes to the Saints. You have, um, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Uh, (laughs) I'm pretty sure uh, you have Kenneth Walker going to Atlanta. And when you have... uh, Let's see, Drake London's going to Washington, Traylon Burke's going to the Eagles. You're going to have some players that are going to have bad landing spots. You're going to have some players that are going to have good landing spots. If it's Atlanta for like running back like Kenneth Walker or like a Packers or a KC, they're easily going to be over Malik Willis in my opinion. Malik, Wilson, Malik Willis is a huge boomer bust. He could be QB1, he could not be. I mean, you're talking Jalen Hurts-esque in my opinion could be where he's at. I don't think he's even Lamar ready. Uh, so 102, Malik Willis. I don't think I'm going to have Malik Willis at 102. I love Malik Willis. I've loved him for months. I just don't think that I can have him at 102 in this draft, even in super flex. I know quarterbacks are king, but gosh, there are some really good prospects at running back wide receiver that I feel a ton more safe about. And we're going to go to 103. Drake London is Washington. And this is again, Mason picked him at three. He would be my five. We haven't got to two and three yet. But Drake London, 111 to Washington, it's an okay spot. If you gave me a 1 out of 5, I would say that's a 3. It's a 3 for location. Um, you look at Gary Wilson goes to the Saints, I would say that's probably a 4, 5 being amazing. I would say it's probably a 4 spot. 
And then if you look at like uh, Traylon Burks going to the Eagles, I would say that's probably the one spot where that's one of the worst situations. You have Jalen Hurts, a running quarterback, and you have a situation where you already have Devontae Smith there, the clear alpha, and somebody that I love talent-wise. So, again, Drake London, fifth overall. That's where I would have him. I would have him behind a couple of guys we're going to talk about. Chris Olave is 104 in his opinion. And he even mentioned it. Mason even mentioned it in his video. This is where you always take uh, you always take talent over basically situation. <laughs> Yet he takes Chris Olave with Packers at the first uh, 122. He's still behind my opinion of Drake London, and he's still behind um, like Garrett Wilson and stuff like that. So, but he has him behind, or he has him ahead of Garrett Wilson, ahead of Traylon Burks, ahead of Kenneth Walker. Uh, he's my number six. So Chris Olave, or yeah, going to the Packers. Again, it's a it's a five out of five spot, but Chris Olave doesn't break tackles. He just doesn't break tackles. I don't understand the hype of Chris Olave being put into the category with Drake London's and Garrett Wilson's. And they even say, oh, he's he performs like Garrett Wilson. No, he is a really good route runner. Chris Olave is, but he cannot break tackles and he has no necessarily wiggle after the catch. He basically catches it and is done. Catches it and is done. So it's all going to matter about air yards for the Packers, which he can get there. But Chris Olave, 104 for Mason, 106 for myself, which brings us to the debate of Garrett Wilson versus Chris Olave. I have Garrett Wilson third. So I have him ahead of Malik Wills, ahead of Drake London, and ahead of Chris Olave. He goes to the Saints, which is a four out of five location, in my opinion. Jameis Winston is there. Michael Thomas is getting closer to 30. The situation will get better. I think even if they can support a wide receiver two in that spot now, they can support a guy that has 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns now. And not only can they support that now, the Saints could easily get a quarterback in the future here. They've been widely known as a team that has desperately wanted to go and reach out for a quarterback. They didn't get one in this rookie draft. Maybe, or actually, they did get one. They got Sam Howell, but that's beside the point. Maybe they, they see that Sam Howell is not the performer, and they try to go get another quarterback in the future. Landing spots and stuff can change dramatically, but Garrett Wilson is extremely talented, and I think having that kind of piece of puzzle, that piece of the pie in the Saints offense, I want that. I definitely want that. And even Camaro's getting older as well. That Saints team is going to change a ton. Uh, yes, he might get stuck into the Terry McLaurin role where he's a wide receiver two and stuck into that wide receiver two spot, but that's okay for me because I am okay with him being kind of stuck into wide receiver 15, wide receiver 17, like for the next seven years. Like, that's which I think Garrett Wilson could easily be. So Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, which one do you think? And by the way, comment who you think is being right so far in this draft. Um, 106, Traylon Burks, which is my number seven here. I just, Eagles, one, I, I don't want them drafting a wide receiver. Any wide receiver that is drafted by the Eagles is going to get a huge decrease because Devontae Smith, because of Jalen Hurts, he's my seven, he's his six, right around the same boat here. Uh, his next one, we're going to go through two guys. Kenny Pickett, well, actually, we're, we'll go through Kenny Pickett first, and then we'll go through the next one because it's, it's important. Kenny Pickett, 107. So he is going to the Steelers. I have him at nine. So we're in the relatively same ballpark there. I would say, um, so right now he has Hall, Malik Willis, Drake London, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, Traylon Burks, Kenny Pickett. And my order is Brees Hall to be named, which we haven't talked about yet. Garrett Wilson, Malik Willis, Drake London, uh, Chris Olave, Traylon Burks. And I'm looking for number eight. Did I put oh, an eight? We have not talked about yet is either. So we have a couple different twists and turns and it's, it's really the, the debate of where do you put Malik Willis? Where do you put Chris Olave? And where do you put, which we're going to be talking about now, Kenneth Walker? Cause that's going to be the biggest change in our rankings. I love Kenneth Walker. He's my number two again. He said that he's picked at 82 overall to Atlanta. He's my number two. I think Atlanta is a really good spot. He's going to take over the Mike Davis role. Yes, Cordell Patterson's there, but for maybe, what, 12 more months? Uh, relevancy? I mean, Kenneth Walker's biggest knock is potentially his receiving ability, which I think he's capable of it. Yes, it is a red flag that he did not do it at the Michigan State level, or at the college level. I don't know why it's the Michigan State level. At the collegiate level. Uh, but he, I thought, looking even at the combine, and you, get, you kind of get the Jonathan Taylor like, can he do it? Yes, he can do it. And if he can do it, 
then that that's what matters. Because, I mean, you Kenneth Walker, I mean, he hasn't been on. Kenny Pickett, Traylon Burks, Chris Lowe, I mean, he hasn't been over a ton of players. And I just don't see it. I mean, the only thing player that I could eat, the, the potentially have in front of him is Garrett Wilson going to the Saints. That was a very tough debate. But, again, I took the running back, who I think is going to have the immediate production in Atlanta, over Garrett Wilson, who's uh, uh, goes to the Saints. So that's my number two. So, again, uh, Chris Olave in this draft, there's going to be a wide receiver that jumps up. Is it going to be Chris Olave? Is it going to be Christian Watson? Uh, is it going to be Jamison Williams? Uh, depending on landing spots. Which, well, there's going to be a wide receiver that, or George Pickens is just going to skyrocket up, and you're going to have to debate how far that person should go in the draft. Where's Malik Willis going to go? I think he's going to be a top three pick, but I don't try, I'm not going to have him in any of my teams because I'm not going to draft him in the top three. And where's Kenneth Walker going to be? Is he going to be where Mason says? Where he's going to be eighth, fifth? I think he's going to be in the top three, in my opinion. He's going to be my number two, maybe my number three if something bad situation happens. Gosh, I really hope he doesn't get drafted in the first three rounds because if he doesn't, then I could see this happening. But uh, that's the only reason why uh, he would get shot down the boards. And I just can't see that with the talent and his pro, uh, his combine days where he's running as fast as Brees Hall. I think that pretty much cemented him as a day two pick. Uh, so number nine is Christian Watson for him. These next three. So I have Christian Watson, Kenny Pickett, and Jamison Williams, which we haven't talked about Jamison Williams. And I haven't had, I don't think I've had a draft where I've had Christian Watson over Jamison Williams. Here we are. And this, these three, if you said Jamison Williams easily over Christian Watson, I'd say, I can see your argument. This is a really tough situation because Christian Watson, number nine, um, and then he has Jamison Williams going 10 to Arizona. So Christian Watson goes to Kansas City. Um, Jameson Williams goes to Arizona. DeAndre Hopkins is getting older and had a horrible target pace last year. Does that continue? Christian Kirk is now gone. Rondell Moore was drafted last year, who's kind of that kind of short, intermediate uh, target guy. Uh, Jameson Williams does fit well. Uh, it is probably a like a 3.5 out of 10. And Christian Watson gets that 5 out of 5 landing spot. I, I love that spot for him as a Kansas City Chief. He's big, fast. I mean, we're talking not Tyreek Hill fast, but gosh, he is super fast. So whew, I put Christian Watson 8, I put Kenny Pickett 9, and I put Jamison Williams 10. But they're all really, really close. And if you said, I want Jamison Williams, if, he, if he's like, Arizona, I love it. I want him way up there. I mean, there's there's even arguments with Traylon Burks at seven. That that's a hard place to to say Traylon Burks is seven with Eagles, or do I just go with Jamison Williams at ten? In fact, if I had the situation that I was at seven in this draft, I would just try to trade back a couple picks and pick up a second. I mean, that's where I would be at this point. Even if I let's say went back to eleven, picked up a late second. Got another, I, I, I lost out on Traylon Burks. I'm now getting, but who is my number one wide receiver number one? Say, so, hey, okay, well, I got poached with Watson and Jameson Williams, and both of our number 11s is George Pickens. He goes to the Jets. I like the situation of the Jets. I think Zach Wilson's going to be better, but this is all a gamble on Zach Wilson. I think Zach Wilson's going to have a bounce back here. Uh, that's my guess, my bet. I could be totally wrong. He could be the next Sam Darnold, and then we're all screwed, <laughs> including my Elijah Moore shares. would go, uh, not, not that crazy. He has 12, 13, 14, Corral, Ritter, and Howell, Seattle Colts, Saints, respectively. I am just going to take a wide receiver, the last wide receiver that I feel like is in that tier over all these wide receiver, over all these quarterbacks, is going to be his 16th overall pick. He had Sky Moore even ahead of him at the Falcons. I'm taking Jahan Dotson. I don't care he's a lion. I think that he is argue he is better than Amon Ross St. Brown, talent-wise. Talent-wise. And so I think he could be the alpha in that Lions offense, which means that he could be a wide receiver. Two for a while here. I am taking that over Matt Corral, Desmond Ritter, and Sam Howell. My only other person that I would debate on this. Gosh, they, they just it's not Desmond Ritter goes to the Colts and eh. Matt Corral goes to Seattle. Okay, but just not a great fit for Matt Corral. I don't know. It's just like I'd rather have Jahan Dotson there at twelve. He's not sixteen in my mind. That's where I would again. If I saw a bunch of these quarterbacks, I'd be asking for teams. This is what I would be doing in drafts. I'd be like, hey, I'm at twelve. I I want an early second this year, or I I want the early second this year. I want a late second. 
412. You can get yourself a quarterback. Uh, or I want an early second. I want an early second. I want 202, 203. I want to move up back a couple spots. I want a second next year. Something along those lines. Hey, okay, you don't want to do that. I will give you a, let's just say I'll do a fourth as well. I'll add a fourth in there as well. These are the debates and these things that I will do during the draft to try to make, because there are times where you're just like, you look at it with these landing spots, and we're going to talk about this a lot when they actually have landing spots, because it's gonna the strategic moves in drafts are so important, where you start getting to a point where you're like, I'm okay moving back a couple spots, or I'm okay moving back, I'm okay with uh, moving up a couple spots to try to grab my guy. I did that with um, Kadarius Tony. I there there was two players left on the board in middle second round of last year's draft. Kadarius Tony, Amon Ross St. Brown. I was I wanted one of the two. I couldn't trade up to the current pick, but I traded to the pick that was next on the clock. And the guy was like, if my guy's gone, then I'm okay with trading away the pick. Amon Ross St. Brown was taken. I traded into the pick because that was his guy, and I got Kadarius Tony. They were relatively close in my opinion, but hey, a mid-second round pick. And the end of ends of second round pick was I don't even remember who it was. It was not somebody good. <laughs> so that's exactly what you have to do. You have to go up and get your guys. Some people are falling, some people are rising. I did the exact same thing with Rashad Bateman. <laughs> he fell in a draft. He got all the way down to like uh he got all the way down to the early second. He was like 202, and I'm like, I want Rashad Bateman. <laughs> and I, re- I reached up there, grabbed him, and now I'm, got a, now I'm a sad Rashad Bateman owner. But I don't care. He's a gopher, and I'm hoping for a rebound here. Uh, this is Marcus Nice with Dads. I hope you like this shit. I hope you like this kind of video game. Comment if you like this type of video where I'm reacting, I'm going against. I know I don't have any descriptions and stuff on the side of the screen. It's tough because... Um, he doesn't really have like a list of players. I don't, it's it's just it's it's tough to actually have things on this side when I'm reacting. Um, another thing I could do is I could play bits and pieces of them, but that's probably copyright infringement, so I probably can't do that. I don't know. Or I can maybe do small segments. <laughs> Or you could just comment on his channel, and maybe I can be a part of that channel. Or I can, re- I can be a guest visitor on his channel. Hey, that would be something. Or he can be a visitor on my channel. Hey, I, I'm open to it as well. All right, this is Marcus Dice with Dads. Peace out. Take care.